Lydia, uh, welcome, and thank you for contributing. Gonzalo, it's very good of you to be part of this. Thank you. Lydia, if I can ask you the first question. What were your first thoughts when you ever heard about circles? Um, hello to everybody. Good morning. <laughs> um, the first thought that I have in my mind, um, I, I listen about the, the research. I, I went to the, the information to the information session from the circles and I and I listened that the project circles or crosses and that it works and and I was the this is was this I oh, sorry it was my first uh, thought in my mind that if this project works should I be part of it should I help to should I help to sorry <laughs> To, to be part or to collaborate with the project and that's what my, my first thought. Bueno, yo lo primero que pensé es tengo que participar en estos proyectos el hecho de no más víctimas es una cosa muy sorprendente pero después reflexionando dije no puede ser digo que esto sea la primera vez que se haga en un proyecto tan importante una, un poder conseguir que con una persona una vez que sale de prisión que, una, que no haya otra víctima o sea, ¿cómo puede ser que no, que no lleve más tiempo haciéndose? Mm. Vale, me sorprendió bastante el hecho de que era la primera vez que se hacía Thank you, that's very interesting and you've, you've already answered the next question so, the perfect interviewee um, which was about the, the reason for you to become a volunteer, so it sounded as though that was very much about wanting to prevent further abuse. And for you, Lydia, it was something about if this if this program works, it's it's worth being a member. So there might be things people want to pick up from there. Before Gonzalo, before your uh, involvement in circles, um, what was the level of your knowledge or experience? in terms of working in the field of, of sexual abuse, sexual offending, had you had any contact um, professionally or in other ways with, with sex offenders? No, 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 ninguno. Para nada. No, whatsoever. No, no, nunca había trabajado con delincuentes sexual. Sí que por mi trabajo, trabajo por mi trabajo, eh, sí que tengo contacto con delincuentes, ¿vale? Pero no con delincuentes sexuales. Era una experiencia totalmente nueva para mí. And what was your your thoughts about sex offenders before you became involved? A ver, sin mi idea, el, mi pensamiento era, en el fondo son personas o es un monstruo, mm. ¿vale? Y el hecho de una vez, al haber participado, en, en estar participando en este proyecto, te das cuenta de que es una persona com, normal como otro cualquiera. Mm. ¿Vale? No es un monstruo, o sea, tiene sentimientos, tiene problemas, llora, ríe, o sea, es totalmente igual a nosotros. Mm. Mm. Thank you. And Lydia, was, what were your sorts of feelings and thoughts about sex offenders before you became involved? Mm. It's similar to what Gonzalo said. Mm. Um, I, when, when you know that, I, I know the, um, the thing that they have made, mm. have made and I can't stand it. Mm. I, I never, it, it's a, for me it's the worst thing mm. that someone can, can do. So at the beginning I was like, oh, can I stay face to, can I be face to face with a yeah. person that has done what, what he had done? And, but <coughs> later when you, when I was face to face to him, I realized that he was a person, he has fears, he, he has uh, similar problems in the life and in his life and, and he wants to um, change something, the, the things that are wrong mm -hmm. from himself, like, like me or, or everyone wants to change the life yeah. and, in, to, in, and follow the good way. 
Thank you, thank you. And I think one of the points that you make there, which is very important for those of us who are involved in a paid, in a professional capacity um, with circles, is to remember just how courageous volunteers are when they first make contact. Um, that all sorts of questions may be in your mind. Um, and it's, for many volunteers, it's a very brave step because it's going into the unknown. Um, and maybe that's um, something which uh, uh, some of us, I particularly for one, need, need to remember. So that, that courage um, is, is tremendous. And what, for, for both of you, were the, the main benefits of the training that you went through? What, what for you was, was most helpful? Lydia. Uh, it was so, <laughs> a long time ago. <laughs> Uh, I remember that in the training we were um, they, the coordinators, uh, the director uh, explained to us mm -hmm. about the the, the project, mm -hmm. about the project in all the count and different countries, mm -hmm. about the history of the project and the effects, and we um, made we we obtain or we they teach us. Um, mm -hmm. Um, about sex offenders mm -hmm. and all the difference that there are. And, but the most, um, um, the most helpful thing was the activities that we have done there and the discussions. Mm -hmm. we, we learn how to solve some situations mm -hmm. in a circle and how to deal with the um, some problems that they are typical in circles mm. and was it was the most helpful thing for us and for you gonzalo what was most helpful from the training me sirvió sobre todo el tema de la resolución de conflictos no siempre cuando estás en un círculo surgen muchos conflictos y hay que saber bien detectar cuál es el problema principal para dar una buena respuesta para dar una buena solución a ese problema And the training gave you opportunity to practice that and to, to develop your confidence. Yes, of course. We did various talleres and in the talleres we applied this. We tried to have problems where we had to try to apply what was the principal problem to give a good solution. Great, thank you. And perhaps we should pay tribute and thanks here to your colleagues, the coordinators um, who recruited you and trained you and supported you and indeed the others in the hall um, for the work that they do. What has most surprised you about your involvement with Circles? Bueno, para mí lo más sorprendente a nivel personal es que ha cambiado total, totalmente la percepción que yo tenía sobre estas personas. O sea, ha sido un, un, el hecho de... Lo ves por la tele, lo oyes, pero me dices, está ahí, o sea, no es cercano. El hecho de tener al lado una persona que te explica desde el primer momento qué es lo que ha hecho, ¿vale? Que te dices, Dios mío, ¿qué es esto? ¿Vale? Pero ves que es, que es otra persona, como tú, como otro cualquiera. ¿Vale? O sea, el, el, la visión que yo tengo ahora de un delincuente sexual es totalmente diferente a la que yo tenía antes. Uh, for me, <laughs> I will answer. My, my answer is the same. I, um, at the beginning, um, I had a perspective, a perspective, a perspective about the, uh, crime, the sexual offenders, and now it has changed a lot and I can put a face on the sex offender. And also I have the, not the face, but the, the victim there. It's approached to me. Not only the sex offender as the victim, or both. Hmm? Well, there's a very helpful lesson that, in terms of what you've both said, all we need to do is to put the whole public through the training program for Circles volunteers. Um, what do, you, what do you think your core member feels about his involvement in the circle? Have you had very much feedback? What, what do you think they think and feel? I think also that the, the feelings about the project for the core member has changed, mm -hmm. as my perceptions has 
change. Mm -hmm. I think that the, the, her, his perception has changed. At the beginning, I think that it was for him like uh, something that he has to do in order to obtain sort of benefits. But honestly, I think that he has changed a lot because he realized that the, the circle, it's useful for him. And he has um, worked some projects or objectives in his life. And, and, he has, and he said to us that sometimes he talked with us and he talked about things that he never talked anywhere with uh, another, I don't know, he has a psychologist and, yeah. and he, he follow a, a treatment in prison and he never said the same things as he shared with us. So I think that he has changed and, and now, in my opinion, um, is, the circle is useful for him and, yeah. and that's good. Gonzalo. Bueno, yo creo que para el miembro central, eh, si él está consiguiendo confiar y sacar sus emociones y expresarse verdaderamente como es delante nuestro, ¿vale? Y esto él siempre nos dice, es que no, sois, de, me, sois de una gran ayuda para mí, ¿vale? Y eso es, para él supongo que debe ser muy importante poder confiar en nosotros para expresar cómo se siente, cómo se encuentra, ¿vale? para poder evitar situaciones de riesgo y que haya otra víctima más. Those are wonderful, very good answers, um, which I think many other volunteers from all the other European countries would, would share with you. So uh, that, that was great. What has been the reaction of any of your family or your friends or colleagues at work if you have told them? Maybe you haven't told them, but if you have told them about what you're involved in. No, no, yo, yo cuando, se lo, cuando se lo dije a mi madre, me miro con una cara diciendo, ¿dónde te estás metiendo? Dice, ¿qué vas a hacer? ¿Con quién te vas a juntar? ¿No? Pero bueno, eso fue su expresión, no, no me dijo nada. Y dije, bueno, si es, yo sé que estas cosas te gustan a ti, pues adelante. No, pero sí que con, con, el círculo, con el círculo de amigos, ¿vale? Sí que me lo, me lo censuraron, diciendo, ¿qué estás haciendo? O sea, estas personas, ¿cómo vas a ayudar a una persona así? ¿Vale? Y entonces cuando yo les expliqué que la finalidad del proyecto era principalmente no haber ni, que no haya ni una víctima más, entonces se quedaron sorprendidos. Diciendo, a ver, digo, a ver, digo, yo voy a intentar que una persona que va a salir ya de la cárcel, va a salir de prisión, vamos a intentar ayudar a reintegrarse en la sociedad para que no haya otra víctima más. Digo, o sea, ¿qué mejor que esto? ¿Qué, qué, qué podemos hacer? Pues esto es lo principal, o sea, es lo mejor que podemos hacer para que no haya ninguna víctima más, poder ayudar a esta persona a reintegrarse en la sociedad. Entonces ya, se, ya no me volvieron a contestar. Vale, supongo que su pensamiento sigue siendo el mismo, pero supongo que ahora se tendrán otro pensamiento. Um, I didn't tell to my family at the beginning, no, but they they knew that I'm I'm I've been collaborating with lots of different NGOs or foundations, and they know that I. I used to do volunteering in difficult yeah. situations, um, but I didn't tell to them till the the media, <laughs> the media. Sh um, honestly, they 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 knew about. They knew that I was collaborating with circles by the media, and I told to yeah, I told to my mom, and I said. Yes, I, I told to you that I'm, I used to work in this, in the, as a volunteer in projects, and she said that, okay, if you, are, if you think that it's a, a good project, I, I'm with you, I will support you, because I know that you are going, doing good, and, and, and she wanted to know more about the project, about my feelings, about how, how it works, and, and she 
and my family support to me. But not my friends. Some of them, they don't, they don't have the same opinion as me. As uh, Gonzalo said, um, some of my, my friends, uh, they don't feel good about the project. But I try to explain them, and I've tried to, to tell them that mm, it's more than just to help a uh, sex offender. It's because it's, it's in order to prevent the number of victims or that. Yes. And, and I think that everyone need have deserve a second opportunity in life. So. Thank you. And, and again, now many more families and, and some friends who have heard about circles and are having their thoughts and their, their preconceptions changed because of what you're doing. And, and the last question is, what would you both say to anybody who was thinking about becoming a volunteer? Que no se lo piense, que lo haga que vivirá una experiencia única. <risa> es una experiencia a nivel personal, a nivel personal es una experiencia muy enriquecedora. Es un reto personal. Depende de tus sentimientos hacia un delito tan, tan grave, por decirlo así de alguna manera, es, eh, te, hace, te puede hacer crecer mucho como persona. I think that uh, if a person wants to be part of, if a person wants to be a volunteer, this person should think about it. <laughs> and, and, and if, I don't know, I also think that it's a good experience and you can learn a lot. A lot every, I learn a lot every day about myself, about the other volunteers, about the core member. And, and I think that um, it's a good opportunity to, to help a person that wants to be, to be part of the society that has done something wrong, but he really wants to change. And, and it's an opportunity to help also the community and, and it's the, the way to prevent more victims. Thank you both very much. Those have been wonderful answers and a, a great insight into your experiences and indeed the experiences of, of many volunteers. Um, thank you for, for what you're doing and, and thank you for being part of, of this introduction to the volunteers and for coming up and doing this more courage uh, that you have displayed and um, wish you well with, with all your volunteering. Thank you. You're welcome. interesting part of, of this brief presentation about uh, volunteering, um, but I thought it might be useful to provide a, a few sorts of bits of information about volunteering in England and Wales and how it's developed over the last 12, 13 years or so. Um, and uh, just a few statistics at the moment, we have, as you see, over 800 volunteers um, involved in, in circles. Uh, that number has gone up year on year. People said at the beginning, you won't get volunteers. Who will want to do this? And I think the, the wonderful humanity of many in our community and the extraordinary volunteers like Lydia and Gonzalo, um, people have come forward and uh, I'm sure will continue, as we all know, will continue to come forward because it's the right thing to do. We did a survey in 2014 just to find out a bit more about our volunteers uh, and we found that 75% uh, are female. That seems like a very high proportion and it would be interesting to, to explore that with, with other countries as to whether that's similar. 64% um, define themselves as heterosexual and 16% are over 50 years and 90% said they considered themselves as having a disability. Um, these are just a few very selective statistics. 82% uh, white British um, and 40% said they had no religious affiliation or, uh, or that was part of their motivation. Um, so the majority 
um, given there were some sort of who probably didn't answer that question, I can't remember, um, would probably say that was an important part of their motivation. And a wonderful cross-section of backgrounds and experiences and professions and jobs and careers that people come from. This is a wonderfully diverse set of volunteers. So we have people from law, we have barristers and magistrates, uh, we have funeral directors, we have bankers and builders, hairdressers, engineers, retired teachers, I won't list them all, uh, you get the picture. Uh, and we also find, uh, and I think it was Lydia sort of picked this up as well, in terms of her experience, a number of our volunteers, and I'm sure yours as well, come with other volunteering experience already. Um, a good proportion have been doing something else in terms of the volunteering field. And Samaritans, which is the, the telephone helpline in uh, the UK for people who are considering suicide, who are really um, in a hard place, um, a number come from Samaritans' experience, victim support, youth work. It's been my privilege to have worked with volunteers for the last 25 years to have been involved, and I've consistently been in, impressed with what volunteers do. But I think for circles, volunteers, there's something very special, actually. And um, you have to be special to, uh, to step up to this. As I mentioned earlier, there was a, a study done by Leeds University. And I don't know whether Dave has arrived. Um, he is. Oh, good. He's here. Dave, and do have a word with Dave um, over coffee or at lunch, who can tell you much more about the, the study that he and some colleagues did. Dave interviewed a number of volunteers. Um, and the report and the, the paper is written up. I'll give you the, the website address later for it. Um, and Dave spoke with, with 20 volunteers um, and interviewed them in depth. Uh, 16 were female, four were male. And the key age groups that um, Dave identified were between 30 and 39, interesting sort of younger end, and then between 60 and 69, but the, the other end. Uh, and there were three that were between the ages of 20 to 29. Very interestingly, I thought, and a number of people found, 14 had experience of working in criminal justice. And again, we do know that a number of people volunteer for circles from their own professional interests and experience, social workers, housing department, probation officers, whatever. And 15 of those 20 had been a member of more than one circle. So it looks like people do carry on and move on, and they don't stop after the first circle. There were four key themes, I think, that came out of um, Dave's study, and very interestingly so. What was the motivation for becoming a volunteer? Nearly half quoted improving their career prospects, but the majority were more motivated by altruistic reasons, for wanting to do something for the community, for wanting to make life better, to, to prevent social, sexual reoffending. Um, and that motivation seemed, certainly was the, uh, the driving force for, for, for most. Critical, Dave identified, was the quality of the relationship between the coordinator and the volunteer. And that, that was critical, certainly, at, at two points. Well, the first point, of course, was the recruitment. Very often, it was the quality of the, the, vo the coordinator that attracted the volunteer and their passion that was conveyed and brought volunteers in. And then, secondly, the ability of the coordinator always to be there and ever-present support for the volunteer as somebody that they could turn to uh, for questions and challenges. Um, and challenges. So that was a key relationship. Also, very interestingly, what came out was the importance of the informal get-togethers, those social events, going for a cup of coffee, going to see a film, an exhibition that volunteers do from time to time with their core member. And these pivotal experiences had great social skills development benefits and were also the, the fun part, it was suggested, through which people learn. We all learn through fun. Why shouldn't those who have um, become a member of a, become a core member of a circle also do so? And that also helped the core members in those social contexts to see the progress they were making and to get informal feedback. There was an interesting exploration of people's understanding of accountability. And maybe there were questions about whether volunteers were thinking of accountability as something which was looking backwards. They were holding the, the, the core member accountable for their past actions or actually was accountability about the here and now and the future was the key function of the volunteer to look at future um, accountability. And that was something that uh, we've spent a fair bit of time talking about and uh, no doubt we will continue to do so. 
That's the, uh, the address for the lead study, and this will, of course, be on the Circles for EU website as part of this presentation. This is just a very quick sort of um, exploration, a brief exploration of the wonderful world of volunteering for Circles. Um, do meet and talk with those volunteers who are here, and uh, we need to find a way of keeping the volunteers in touch with each other across the European sort of um, uh, context which we're, we're celebrating over these two days. But thank you very much indeed.